The pituitary gland consists of an anterior and a posterior lobe. Hormones produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland include growth hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, lodeonizing hormone, follicular stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropin hormone, and prolactin. Hormones stored and released from the posterior pituitary are antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin and oxytocin, which are produced by neurosecretory cells in the hypothalamus. Hypopituitarism is defined as a deficiency of one or more of the hormones produced by the pituitary gland. The causes of hypopituitarism can be attributed to either pathology of the hypothalamus affecting the production of trophic hormones that act on the pituitary or direct pathology of the pituitary gland itself. The most common cause of hypopituitarism is the presence of pituitary tumors. Pituitary tumors may cause the increased production of one hormone with resultant deficiency of the other pituitary hormones as in acromegaly where there is excess growth hormone with hypopituitarism from the macroadenoma. Secondary metastases originating from for example breast, colon and prostate cancers do occur less commonly. Hypothalamic and parapituitary tumors such as supracellular meningiomas, gliomas, and craniopharyngiomas may also be associated with hypopituitarism. Other causes of hypopituitarism include injury to the pituitary gland following traumatic brain injury or iatrogenically during surgery or cranial irradiation. Inflammatory conditions of the pituitary may also be responsible for the occurrence of hypopituitarism. The infectious agents that can have been related to pituitary insufficiency include mycobacterium tuberculosis and non-mycobacterial agents such as histoplasmosis, syphilis, viruses, and protozoa. Infiltrative diseases such as hemochromatosis, sarcoidosis, and histocytosis may be associated with the development of hypopituitarism. Pituitary apoplexy is a medical emergency and is due to acute ischemic infarction or hemorrhage of the pituitary gland. Pituitary apoplexy may occur in the presence of a pituitary adenoma but may also occur in the normal pituitary gland. Sheehan syndrome refers to infarction of the hyperplastic pituitary gland during pregnancy due to severe blood loss. Because of the rich and complex vascular supply, pituitary adenomas have an increased risk of bleeding when compared to other brain tumors. Presenting signs and symptoms may be linked to that of a deficiency of the pituitary hormone, mass effects in the presence of pituitary tumors, and or features of the causative disease. Patients with hormonal deficiencies present with the following. ACTH deficiency presents with adrenal insufficiency. TSH deficiency presents with hypothyroidism. Gonadotropin deficiency presents with hypogonadism. Growth hormone deficiency presents with difficulty to thrive and short stature in children. Adults are usually asymptomatic, however, they may feel fatigued and weak. ADH deficiency presents with polydipsia and polyuria. Mass effects include visual field defects, known as bitemporal hemianopsia. Visual field defects may also occur unilaterally. Patients may also present with headaches secondary to the mass lesions. Physical examination may not reveal any significant findings as the presentation is usually subtle. Variable features may be present owing to the involvement of different target hormones. Hypothyroidism manifests as small and soft thyroid gland, dry and coarse skin, thinning of hair and alopecia, delayed tendon reflexes, cold skin with loss of sweating and non-pitting edema. Adrenal insufficiency manifests as buccal hyperpigmentation and postural hypotension in cases of Addison's disease. Hypogonadism manifests as small and atrophied testes in men. There may be loss of axillary and pubic hair in women. Neurological and ophthalmic involvement manifests as loss of visual acuity, extraocular paresis and bitemporal hemianopsia. 
In cases of growth hormone excess in functioning adenomas may result in features consistent with acromegaly. Initial testing involves baseline levels of pituitary hormones and hormones produced by target glands. Due to the variation of hormone levels related to the time of day, season, and pulsatile secretion of certain pituitary hormones, baseline levels may not be helpful. In this instance, dynamic function testing may be performed to confirm biochemical deficiency or excess of a particular pituitary hormone. In dynamic function testing, for the investigation of a hormone deficiency, a stimulatory agent that would normally increase secretion of the hormone is given to the patient and blood levels are measured before and after the administration of the agent. After the administration of this stimulant, measurements are taken at defined intervals to determine if there has been an adequate response to stimulation. Insulin tolerance test is the best provocative test that is used to assess the presence of the deficiency of both growth hormone and cortisol. Following an overnight fast, baseline samples are obtained for cortisol, growth hormone and glucose. An insulin dose of 0.1 or 0.05 unit per kilogram is administered intravenously. Further samples for analysis of the hormones measured in the baseline samples are then taken at several other time points after administration. It should not be performed in those with cardiac disease or epilepsy. The plasma glucose should fall to 40 mg per deciliter within 30 to 45 minutes or by 50% of baseline. The test is terminated by giving IV dextrose and assessing the patient's status for at least 90 minutes. A normal or adequate response is indicated by cortisol of more than 20 micrograms per deciliter and growth hormone of more than 5 to 10 nanograms per milliliter. In modern combined test, the patient is given growth hormone releasing hormone, cortisol releasing hormone, gonadotropin releasing hormone, and thyroid releasing hormone as the provocative stimuli and growth hormone TSH, ACTH, cortisol, LH and FSH are measured at baseline and at specified time intervals after that. However, this testing is rarely required. Imaging studies of the pituitary using MRI with gadolinium enhancement are used to visualize the pituitary in particular to detect the presence of a mass lesion. Visual field defects need to be assessed if a pituitary mass is the cause of hypopituitarism. Management is dependent on the cause of hypopituitarism. Initial treatment is to address the underlying cause of hypopituitarism. Mass lesions may be removed surgically and other medical conditions treated accordingly. Many patients may require hormone replacement therapy. In ACTH deficit, corticosteroid replacement should be initiated before the replacement of the thyroid hormone to avoid precipitating an adrenal crisis. Hydrocortisone at a dose of 10 to 20 mg in the morning and 5 to 10 mg in the evening is given. Prednisone may also be used. Increased dosages of corticosteroids are given during periods of stress, surgery, and pregnancy. In TSH deficit, thyroid hormone replacement is essential, in particular for the elderly and those with cardiac disease. In secondary hypogonadism, Testosterone can be delivered by gel, patch, or intramuscular injections every two weeks with careful monitoring of prostate-specific antigen and testosterone levels. In women, estrogen or progesterone hormone replacement therapy via oral, intramuscular, or transdermal routes can be given. If fertility is desired, then one starts with human chorionic gonadotropin to augment testosterone levels and improve semen quality. If this is not successful after one year, consider human menopausal gonadotropin or recombinant FSH concomitant therapy to further enhance fertility. 
Unlike in children with short stature due to growth hormone deficiency, the role of growth hormone replacement in the treatment of adult growth hormone deficiency has not been well established. In children, synthetic growth hormone replacement is used for this purpose, such as somatotrophin. Replacement therapy is titrated against IGF levels. The goal of treatment is to ensure that adult height is obtained. Further evaluation is made post-puberty to determine whether growth hormone replacement should continue into adulthood. Replacement of ADH with intranasal desmopressin helps stabilize water balance and polyuria. Thanks for watching this video. You may like to watch other videos in this playlist. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not done yet.